Well, welcome to 10 Minute Record Reviews, episode number 76. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, this time we're going to talk about Three Friends by the British progressive rock band Gentle Giant. This came out in 1972. Somewhat weirdly, on this release, they used the cover image from their uh, first album, although they gave it a different, they, gave, they actually included the title of the third album, but this same image was used on their first album as well which is kind of an eclectic and odd choice, but this is an, you know, an eclectic and odd band, so I guess uh, fair enough. And nothing, I think, sums up the, <laughs> the nature of, uh, of this group's commitment to progressive rock than their, their sort of unofficial slogan, which was that their group goal was to expand the frontiers of contemporary popular music at the risk of becoming very unpopular. But it's actually a pretty good record, notwithstanding. Even by the standards of progressive rock, uh, they wrote some pretty technically challenging stuff. Um, the, the, the core of the band are all gifted multi-instrumentalists. But nevertheless, it's, I consider it to be more accessible than, than a lot of prog rock. So, Gentle Giant are, as I mentioned, a British band. They have their roots in Scotland, in Glasgow, and they are basically formed by a nucleus of three brothers. And they are the Shulman brothers, Phil Shulman, who was born in 37, and then his younger brothers, Derek and Ray, who were born after the war. All three were highly talented musicians who played all kinds of different instruments, stringed instruments, keyboards. A couple of the brothers sang as well. They first got into music in the early 1960s doing what you might call, I guess, Blue-Eyed Soul, sort of music that was quite influenced by Sam Cooke and other folks. Their first major foray was in a band which they formed called Simon Dupree and the Big Sound. There was no actual Simon Dupree, so Phil sort of adopted the, you know, the moniker of Simon Dupree in, in publicity and on, their, and on their, the sole album that they released. And this band existed between 1966 and 1969. They released a few singles and actually released a whole album on Parlophone. They played the club scene all over the UK. Quite famously, in 1967, they toured Scotland and their regular piano player was off sick, so they drafted in a replacement called Reg Dwight, otherwise known as Elton John, who had achieved no degree of fame at that point. And he toured with them, as you can see here from this uh, photo from the Highlands. He wanted them to record some of his tunes and they, they didn't want to do that. They sacked him and, and, and as they sacked him, he told him he was changing his name to Elton John and they laughed him out of the room. So anyway, it was uh, not necessarily a match made in heaven. They weren't having much success in the sort of soul R&B lane and so their management at the time started to push them into what was contemporary, which was the whole psychedelic scene. And so they produce a, a psychedelic pop tune called Kites, it makes it to number 10. The brothers completely hated it. In fact, they were so ashamed by all of this that they tried to get back surreptitiously to their own actual style of music and they created a fake group called The Moles and released a single called We Are The Moles, uh, which, you know, didn't chart. There was some interest in this because a rumor began to spread that this was actually The Beatles uh, recording under a pseudonym and that it was Ringo singing. Anyway, that experiment came to nothing. The psychedelic experiments came to nothing. The soul and R&B numbers had come to nothing. And on top of this, the brothers felt that the musicians they were surrounded with were basically not up to it. So they scrapped the Simon Dupree lineup in 1969. And after a short while, reform another band, Gentle Giant. The idea behind Gentle Giant was not so much to, you know, do a prog band, because you have to recall, progressive rock was really in its infancy at that point. The idea was simply to recognize that the three of them had backgrounds and interests in, in jazz, in folk, in classical, and pop, and wanted to be able to take advantage of all of that rather than getting channeled narrowly into a pop lane. They added two other multi-instrumentalists, Gary Green and Kerry Muneer, who also did vocals, although he, interestingly, would sing vocals on the albums, but for one reason or another, they could never mic his voice properly to be heard in concert. They also brought back the drummer from Simon Dupree, a guy called Martin Smith. And so Green, Muneer, Smith, and the three Schulman brothers is the original classic lineup of Gentle Giant. Their first couple of albums in the late 60s, early 70s uh, did not chart at all. Uh, eventually, the drummer Martin Smith leaves the band after disagreements with the brothers. So I guess you could ask David Lee Roth or, or Mark Evans or other people who were in bands with brothers about what it's like 
It usually only means a one-way ticket out of the band. They bring in a guy called Malcolm Mortimer on drums, and this then is the lineup, Green, Kinnear, Mortimer, and the three Shulman brothers who produced Three Friends, which, unlike the first two albums, actually charts. After this, the band takes in different directions. Uh, Phil leaves, I think he stays for one more album, then he goes home to be a family man. He's 10 years older than the other brothers. And then the group moves in a slightly more hard-rocking direction for the rest of the 1970s. Not hard-rocking enough for some, apparently, because in 1972 they toured and supported Black Sabbath, who had just released Black Sabbath Volume 4, and uh, they got booed off the stage, apparently, every night for being a little too proggy. I can sort of see how that might happen. They release eight more albums after this. Uh, they actually get up to number 45 in 1975 with an album called Free Hand, which is largely considered to be their best. But this is not a bad effort. So Three Friends is a concept album about social class and friendship. It's about three men who have known each other since they were school friends. And it sort of follows loosely their trajectories as you know, their lives unfold. And one of them becomes an artist, one of them becomes a manual labor, like a ditch digger, and, and one of them becomes uh, an office worker, like a white collar worker. Through the lyrics you learn that basically they drift apart in their, in their connection and their mutual understanding as, as time goes by, which frankly is pretty coherent as a concept album compared to some I can think of. So we start off with the prologue. Okay, so right away, even with a song called Prologue, you know you're listening to progressive rock. And as if that weren't enough, then instantly you're into a whole bunch of different time signatures. So you're right into it. And there's no, no messing about. There's no four in the floor here. Production two is a little bit quirky, I think. There's lots of echo, and the only instruments that really get a lot of prominence are the keyboards and, and some of the vocals. Then we get into a more substantive number, which is School Days, which starts off with this sort of little ditty, kind of almost sung in the round, I guess. Lots of electric piano has a little bit of a, a feeling of an interlude. When I first listened to this, I was not really taken with this until about halfway through the song. Then you get into a really cool piece of what is basically jazz funk out of nowhere, and, and which I actually really liked. Uh, and then you get back into this echoey sort of prog rock. So uh, better than the first tune, uh, interesting multi-part and all kinds of different things going on. Um, it's still, for me, not super memorable, I don't think. The things improve with Peel the Paint. Some people think this is the best song in the album. I, I actually think, as I mentioned, the better songs are on side two. There's a seamless sort of segue into the track. Um, this is more of, a, of an out-and-out -out rock song, even if it is in 5-4. You know, I guess you need to make some concessions to the, to the genre. But this is more of a, of a straight-ahead rock song. Instruments are much more present in the mix. I actually really like this tune. And so the, the side one ends fairly strongly with uh, Peel the Paint. Side two begins with Mr. Class and Quality, and again, we're into a lot of time signature craziness at the outset, and some low range figures on bass and organ. There are some strings, which are either played or arranged by, maybe both, by, uh, by Ray Shulman, I think actually both. There are some parts of this which I have to say I was delighted to find actually rock you know, pretty heavy. This does remind me a little bit of Rush. A lot earlier than Rush ended up sounding like this too, so it's, it's interesting, another song quite a strong song, I think, an interesting song, and, and certainly a well-played song. All the way through, I should say, regardless of what I've said about the quality of the tunes, the ability of the band and the breadth of their knowledge of, of different instruments and, and different musical styles is frankly pretty breathtaking. So it's, it's technically superb, even if the finished product you know, doesn't always kind of get there. You, you can appreciate the components that go into it. Mr. Class and Quality also has a really excellent riff, uh, which, you know, is, is uh, you have that and you're halfway there. Then the final song on the album and the, and the, and the second song on side two is, is the title track, Three Friends. It starts off with this kind of noodly organ. It's got, a, it's got quite a funky feel. It's a very catchy song. Again, it's very much in, in the Rush vein or what would become the Rush vein later on uh, in this decade. Definitely a song that you want to play loud and rock out to. It's kind of like jazz rock medieval fusion, which sounds you know, really repellent, but actually works kind of well, I think, uh, with this particular tune. And overall, confirms for me that side two is the side, if I'm going to put one side on, it's definitely that's the side I'm going to listen to, because both these songs, Rooster Class and Quality and Three Friends, are really good, quite hard-rocking, progressive workouts, and, and, uh, and, and worth the price of the album alone. So, what to say about this album overall? Well, 
it's an interesting outing. It's made by a band brimming over with musical ability and, and, and knowledge of different instruments and, 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 uh, and musical theory and who were very frustrated by being forced into any one particular pigeonhole and they certainly managed to escape pigeonholes here. Do they do so in a way which is appealing to the listener? Yeah, they do. I think definitely in the second side there's lots there to appeal to rock fans of pretty much any persuasion. There are also some excesses which we associate with prog rock, but you have to admire the musicianship uh, and you have to admire the effort and I think you get a sense too of where this band would go and how they would improve as the years went by. So for me, there are better things to come here, some good points, some weaknesses, and I give this three and a half out of five stars.